What's up, what's up, guys? You're from the chest. My name is Justin Grande, and I'm your host on this personal development podcast that's geared towards igniting and inspiring you and actually extracting that dormant passion lays within you. Hopefully, hopefully, I can do that for you guys. Guys, if you're new to this podcast, welcome. I want to welcome you and, and just thank you for your tuning ear and your listening attention. I, I really, 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 really appreciate it. And for all the people that have been with me from the gate, guys, you know I have much love for you and I very, very much appreciate you as well. Guys, um, we have a saying in the nutritional industry, fitness industry, if you will, that goes a little something like this. Every carb is not created equal. And that really came about, at least I feel it came about when the whole, if it fits your macros approach began getting a lot of attention. And if you're new to or not understanding what if it fits your macros is, it's basically saying you have a certain amount of calories you can eat in the day. All the calories are coming from your, you know, they're, they're partitioned in your carbs, fats, and proteins. And if you get all of your carbs, fats, and proteins matched with whatever food you pick, then you're okay. And you're going to be, you're going to be streamlining towards your goals, whatever that be, if it's losing weight or if it's building muscle, excuse me. Okay. So the, the whole whereabouts of a carb not being equal to one another came about by people basically allowing themselves to eat pop tarts in this type of a diet this if it fits your macros this pop tarts and twizzlers and all this junk and just because it fit in their caloric intake and their macronutrient intake then they felt oh well um this is this is this is okay this is going to help me to keep gaining muscle and blah blah, blah. okay that may be okay if you're eating 90% good and 10% of it is shit food, all right? Now, where it went off the rails is when people started saying, well, calories in, calories out, that's king. If I want to lose weight, I just need to eat less calories than I'm burning. And it doesn't matter where those calories come from. That is where the onset or the trajectory shift change with carbohydrates where every carb is not created equal. And you can argue every protein, every fat is created equal, but that's not really what causes an influx in weight a whole lot. Not fats and protein calories, it's more so what you do with your carbohydrates and manipulation, etc. So the whole carbohydrate, one is not equal to another. Some people will argue that, you know, and they'll say, well, so-and-so is shredded and he eats blah, blah, blah. Well, what you probably don't know about so-and-so is they're on a shit ton of gear too. They're on a shit ton of pharmaceuticals and they have those things doing a lot of the job that you maybe don't. And so you can't compare and contrast between a person that's souped up on pharmaceuticals and someone who is naturally derived, where they're just eating what they can and they're, I'm sorry, they're just ingesting what they can from the grocery store and their local, you know, mom and pop GNC. And so, but really, I'm going off the rails there with that. Really, let's circle back. Not every carb is created equal. And you can argue that not every person is created equal too. Yes, I know we're all equal in the stance of, well, we're all created under one God, etc., etc. But the way that people operate is not the same and and by default makes them not equal because you can have somebody you can have two people that are great businessmen that have uh, it seems like they have a, a long history of success and you 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 look back on how they got there and one went there with hard work discipline fortitude tenacity has all those linking elements to why the, he is who he is and then you have another guy that even though he may have success, he did things just to get ahead, whether it was cut people's throats, not physically, but, you know, metaphorically, um, you know, just swindle and, and, and sway people with, you know, the next big 
big gimmick that's come out that comes out and you know he just happened to just hit gold with one thing and now he's you know a success story i have a visceral not hatred but a visceral uh discrepancy with people that just do what they can to get by and they do what they can not well i shouldn't say get by but they do what they can to to get a leg up even when it's not integral based instead of they're always trying to find the quick route they're always trying to find the quick route and you can argue that the people that do this type of iifym or if it fits your macro stop type style diet they're also looking for a shortcut they're looking to enjoy and indulge but not take the necessary precautions that they need to by eating right by exercise by doing it the whole the old fashioned way, the tried and true way. They got a problem with doing that. They think that they can reinvent the fucking wheel. They think that they can just go in this direction and then, you know, um, I do this and just because it's calories and calories out, they're all, you know, calculated about it, that that's gonna make me the same, it's gonna put me in the same position as it would somebody else that's eating chicken and rice. And let me tell you, you couldn't be further from the truth. Cause a diet that's filled with honey buns and pancakes and Danishes and Pop Tarts is not going to be reminiscent physiology, uh, physiologically and hormonally and endocrinologically on the body as something of a standard 40 40 20 split, meaning 40% coming from good carbs, 40% coming from good proteins, 20% coming from good fats, or some type of balanced ratio like that. The way that your body sees a food and the chemicals that are within the food, etc., and the nutrients and everything that's within the food is going to react and respond appropriately. And it's not going to be the same. It's not going to respond the same with the Snickers bar as it is with a bowl of oatmeal or with a, a cup of sweet potatoes or yams with some cinnamon sprinkle on. It's not going to respond the same. So you may think that, you know, I can get here and I can be this version of what I want. I can lose the weight because I just have to factor in calories and calories out. But there's so many other physiological processes that take place as a byproduct of what you eat. And that can go along with the people that try to initiate a different type of trajectory on their own, thinking that they're going to get to where this success the successful person is the same way if they just cut corners here, cut corners here, cut corners here, and they just do these little these little maneuvers, these zigzags, like they're fooling anybody, and that they're fooling themselves more importantly. And that, that, that along the way, even if they get to where the successful person is, they do not derive the one thing that's going to stand them apart from the rest, and that's consistency and integrity. And clearly, they've sacrificed authenticity and their character in the process, in the pursuit of the success that they want or that they desire. Let's take it back at the root of that person. What do you even want success for if it's fake or if it's, or if it's, un, if it's dissected apart from what your true passion or true calling or innate qualities are? What does it even mean at that point? All your achievements, if they're uninitiated or they're misaligned from the abilities that God gave you, they're going to be empty achievements at best. Do you understand that? That's why I don't understand why people predicate money before they predicate their passion. Those, those, those things are so, <laughs> you, you, okay, so it's like, it's like the old saying goes, you're putting the car before the horse. And I've said that so many times, so often, but it stands so true. You're putting the car before the horse. You're trying to make as much money as you can and figuring out what, what avenues can give me the most income or what is the most lucrative in what I can do or what I feel like is at my fingertips. You're putting the car before the horse. You need to figure out what your passion is. And that's so loosely said nowadays. I'm so packed because people will tell you I'm so passionate about this and that and the other. Passion is not to be confused with a hobby. A hobby is something you do because you just love filling your time with it. 
A passion is something that you can't get rid of. It's a burning desire. It's an urgent call out of your visceral state. And when I say visceral, that means your fucking gut. I'm talking about from the from a from your deep inside of your gut. You can't get rid of this. It's something that's nagging you every single day. A hobby is something like going and shooting hoops at the basketball court or putting your roller blades on, going skating or um, playing video games for like, you know, 15, 20 minutes. Like that's a hobby. Your hobby is not your passion, bro. And you're getting it confused. And maybe there's a lot of attachment to money on the end of your of your of your of your hobby. And so you confuse that with passion and you end up putting everything into that hobby knowing but but see it's not feeding your passion. And because it's not feeding your passion, you don't have the kind of fuel that you need to keep this train going. And because of that, you're losing at the end of the day. And because of that, whatever your achievements you do fulfill or you do make happen, they're going to be empty anyways. That's why it's so important to become a self-aware with who you are, with how God made you. It doesn't matter if it's a reputable, if it's a reputable characteristic or if it's popular, if it's going to make you popular or not. Like you got to be true to who you are and continuously press forward into that. You got to push, you got to push until something breaks. You can't just continue to, to, you know, bleed on like, you know, little by little. And if nothing happens, I'm just going to quit this. Like it's got to be something that you're committed to for life. That even if this world were crumbling far more than it is right now, you couldn't help but do that thing, period. And you'll be doing it like the people on the Titanic were playing music until the ship went down. They did that shit because that's what they loved. They let, they went out like that. And also probably because they wanted to keep everybody calm. But at the same time, they are human beings. They could have ditched their violin. They could have ditched that whatever they were, <laughs> the, the banjo, <laughs> whatever they're playing. They could have ditched that and said, fuck this, I'm out, man. And they could have took their own life, or whatever. But when I say, <laughs> that's kind of brutal, took their own life. But you know, that's what they were doing on the Titanic. They were jumping shit, man, because they were freaking out. But these guys, it's documented. These guys kept playing. They kept playing even in the midst of turmoil and fear. They kept playing because that's all they know. And they loved it. And they kept playing because they, if they're going to go, because they knew they were, they're going to go playing. They're going to go out playing music because that's what feeds their heart. That's what feeds their soul. That's what feeds their passion. And I want to ask you, are you doing that same thing? Even though there's turmoil around you, there's fires are all around you. Are you still functioning off of your heart's passion, the visceral urgency that you feel every single day? Or are you just succumbing to the dollar? There's a lot of, there's a lot of, I'm going to put it like this. There's a lot of confusion behind functioning in your hobby and your passion nowadays. The two are not alike. Don't get them twisted. I've already expressed to you what a passion is and what a hobby is. This road is not easy. It's not meant to be easy. You're going to have to get, you're going to have to get beat up a little bit. You're going to have to get tried. You're going to have to get challenged. You're going to have to be questioned and over and over and over again. Because becoming great isn't for everybody. Many people are called, but only few are chosen. And for you to be a chosen one, you got to go through the ringer a few thousand times. But if you only know this thing, that thing that you're great at, that thing that's urging you inside viscerally, you only know that? You don't know, but you're already committed. And there is no turning back. This is non-negotiable. You don't have any other route. There is no plan B. This is it. But on the other hand, if you're not aware with who you are yet, you haven't identified with your passion, 
and you're chasing the dollar, trying to do whatever you can to just get ahead. Let me tell you, life isn't about getting ahead. Life is about making other people get ahead. And in the process, you grow. Most people have it ass backwards, just like they have the cart car before the horse and all the other situations of their life involving money. They're fine trying to figure out what's the most lucrative instead of trying to figure out what they're identifying with and what they're aware of who they are and doing that, going all in on that. They're so concerned with how many likes they're going to get on the Instagram if they post something. They're so, they're so concerned. They're so concerned about the validity of a post and how many likes it's going to get or how many comments it's going to get that they won't show you what's really happening in their life because they're too afraid to show you their real, real life because for fear that you're not going to accept it and you're not going to put them on the pedestal that they want to be on. You think you're winning when you get likes. You think you're winning when you're putting a facade on. Just because people can't figure out who you are or just because people are gloating with you and they're, they're praising you for the stuff, some shit that you're not even that good at. You're just faking the front. You're really losing in real life. You're playing a game. You can play Instagram all you want. You can play your highlight reel all you want, but the reality is you'll gather more souls by expressing all of the negative things and the thoughts and the, and the dwellings that you reside in every single day. Let me, let me rephrase that. You'll gather more people's attention being transparent in your shit, in your shit life than you will in your glam life. Yeah, I like that better. People can't resonate with your glam life. But they sure as shit resonate with all your troubles and all of the crap that you got to go through. Because we all are going through it. And you'll be more of a motivation to somebody, more of an inspiration when you express what you've gone through and you've made it out. And that doesn't call taking the easy road. That doesn't call eating whatever you want just as long as it fits your calorie profile. You're going to have to eat the bland way just like every great person that acquired anything did in the first place. They ate bland. They ate shit. They ate what they needed to eat to get where they wanted to get. It's no different in life. But if you think eating Twizzlers and drinking Kool-Aid and shit just because it makes your caloric needs for the day is going to get you just ex just in the same position as John over here that's eating chicken and rice and sweet potatoes. You're so mistaken. It's crazy. And you deserve all of the shit that you get in the end for trying to take that road, for trying to take the short road, for trying to think that, for thinking, you know, for the, the audacity to think that these two are equal. These two men, they're not equal. One is willing, one is not willing. One is a man, one is a pussy. Done.